Big problems for Manchester City and Pep Guardiola as the Spaniard faces his toughest challenge yet within management. Hey guys, Fletch here bringing you another Fletch Talks video and in this video we're going to be talking about Pep Guardiola, the challenges that he's facing, the challenges he's bringing on himself and as a collateral, the problems that he's bringing on to Manchester City. Over the weekend, of course, City lost 2-0 to Tottenham in a game that saw Spurs climb to the top of the table and as a result, put eight points between themselves and Pep Guardiola's side. City do have a game in hand over the rest. They are one of four teams to have a game in hand over the rest of the teams in the league. But already this season, City have dropped half of the points they could have maximum accumulated. They've dropped 12 points from a possible 24, with draws to the likes of Leeds United, West Ham and Liverpool, and losing to Leicester, and of course this past weekend's opponent Tottenham. And it now sees City lie in 13th place in the table, with 8 points separating themselves from the top 2. It's of my opinion that we start to pour City and Pep Guardiola more and more under the microscope, so to speak, with some more um, hard-hitting questions and more serious questions to be asked of both of them. Earlier this week, of course, Pep Guardiola did sign a new two-year contract with City that will see him stay at the club until at least 2023. But the 2-0 loss over the weekend to Spurs has had many fans, spectators and pundits and whoever else begin to ask some more serious questions of him more and more. But I feel like these questions should have already been coming last season. When you look at City's performance and City's campaign last season, City did finish when it was up to Liverpool, which on its surface looks pretty decent. Okay, they came, they came second, they kind of quote-unquote got the silver medal, so to speak in the league and it you know it, it doesn't look too bad it looks like something they can build upon and rebuild and stuff but when you look at the huge points difference that was separating the two top sides last season liverpool city there's like 18 points separating them when you look at city's uh, record in the in the campaign overall and you see that city lost nine times throughout the campaign that's one more loss than manchester united who finished third that's the same amount of losses as Wolves, who finished seventh, and one less loss than eighth place Arsenal. It doesn't look too great when you put it into that kind of context. It was quite the drop off from this club from back to back Premier League title campaigns from the past couple of years previously. And everyone needs to take responsibility for that. But more importantly, People need to stop being so lenient on Guardiola and this City side, in my opinion, just because of the history that this club has done in their domestic campaigns in previous years. So let's look at Guardiola and try and identify what's gone wrong with him over the past couple of seasons. When Guardiola took charge, he inherited an ageing squad and the majority of players, they were in their late 20s, early 30s, uh, with a few exceptions, of course. However, there was still a very good spine to that, to that squad. And an experienced spine, a, a, a good spine to sort of build off. The likes of Vincent Kompany, David Silva, Yaya Torre, Fernandinho, and of course, Sergio Aguero. But it was clear that Guardiola had a lot of work to do when he attempted to implement his style of play onto this squad. And for the first season, it didn't quite hit the ground running. In his first season, he spent around £182 million bringing in the likes of John Stones, Ilkay Gundogan, Leroy Sane, Claudio Bravo and Gabriel Jesus. Since then, he's gone on to continue to spend in his second season, he went all out and brought Kyle Walker, Edison, Emeric Laporte, Benjamin Mendy and Bernardo Silva. This was of course the season in which City blew away the competition, becoming Centurions and winning the league with 100 points. 
The following season, City were a little quieter in the transfer window than their usual selves, but still made a big wave in the transfer window nonetheless by splashing £61 million on Riyad Mahrez from Leicester. This was, of course, the season they went on to defend their Premier League title and become the first men's team to win the domestic treble in the same season. But Pep knew the Premier League title was a little fortunate as the rise of Liverpool was a serious threat to him, having only beaten the Reds to the title by a single point. And so City went on to flex their wealth by beefing up their squad with another cash injection the following season, bringing in the likes of Jao Cancelo and Rodri. But despite that, City had only the Carabao Cup to put in their trophy cabinet come the end of the campaign. Since Pep took over in 2016, Pep has spent around the sum of 800 million. There, thereabouts, give or take, whatever. That's just on major transfers alone. Who knows what else has been going on behind the scenes or with or however far you go down uh, youth academy wise. And around 500 million of that has been spent on attempting to improve the defense constantly. But it's not exactly worked out. Sure, there have been some success. The first English manager to achieve winning the domestic treble, like I mentioned. And, of course, being the first manager in recent years to have successfully defended the Premier League title, winning it back to back. But when you put, when you look at the current state of the squad and the money involved in creating the squad he's got right now, they look far away from where they should and the money that they've got to spend on that squad and put it all together. And I guess it goes back to all of these criticisms of Guardiola over the years, that he's a fraud, he's a checkbook manager, and that he's been blessed to inherit some of the best footballing squads ever seen within the game. And to be fair, that kind of criticism kind of matches up with the evidence when you put it into that kind of context. He was incredibly blessed to, to take over some of the best sides football has ever seen in the Barcelona squad he took charge of, and that contained arguably the greatest player of all time. He was also blessed to take charge of such a wonderful Bayern Munich side that, that were in their prime and that were bullying the rest of the Bundesliga. And of course, that Bayern Munich side had the ability to basically cherry pick the best players within that league in, ter in terms of the teams below them. And he had a fairly comfortable ride over there, to say the least. And when he moved to City, it was a solid squad, like I say, that needed just a few tweaks here and there to get them challenging again and being a consistent challenger for the Premier League title. And also, let's not forget that at the time he came in, this was a side where the teams, teams the likes of Manchester United, Liverpool and Arsenal were all going through rebuilding stages. Whilst Chelsea had issues with their manager and their club hierarchy behind the scenes. And Tottenham had the squad to challenge, but didn't have the squad depth or mentality for anyone to seriously believe that they were going to genuinely challenge. So it was at a time where, again, English football was having to kind of rebuild. And Guardiola seemed to be the right in the right place at the right time to take this City side to new highs. And let's face it, the cash argument is always going to be significant. City are loaded with cash, head and shoulders above the rest term, in terms financially. And that's why Pep is able to play around with that money and play around with the squad as much as he wants. It's basically like a kid playing FIFA or football manager. And it's proof with the way that he handled the goalkeeper situation when he first came into the club. He brought in Claudio Bravo, of course, in his first season and attempted to change the way that goalkeepers play the game. And Bravo made a ton of mistakes and that was too much for him. He had so many lies that Guardiola was like, nah, get rid of this guy. And then he went on and brought Edison a season later as his replacement. And further proof is with this defence spending. I already mentioned that he spent over 500 million playing around with his defence and he still can't get a solid back four together to put together on a more consistent and solid and reliable basis. Especially the less said about the left back situation, the better as far as he's concerned. Seriously, 
Their left back has contributed more on social media to memes and stuff than he has done on the pitch. But yeah, it's still got a Premier League title and even a World Cup winner's medal to his name. Mad guy. And look, I think on reflection, we should put some respect on to Guardiola's name for what he's done in this country. Winning the Premier League, going on to retain it a year later in back-to-back -back, uh, title victories. Being the first team to get 100 points in a single season and going on to become the first men's team to win the domestic treble is nothing to be scoffed at. But when you put it all into perspective with the money aspect involved, maybe, just maybe, we should expect that to happen. Maybe we should be expecting more. And I'm sure there are probably many people out there that don't agree with me. Maybe there are many people out there that have been satisfied with how City have conducted themselves domestically. But I don't think anybody, and I really mean anybody, that can complain over the biggest failure of Pep at City today. And that is, of course, the issues that don't lie domestically, but the ones that lie within their performances in Europe. Let's face it, Guardiola was brought into City for a number of reasons, mainly to uh, solidify themselves as to being consistent title contenders, along with winning as many domestic cup trophies as possible. But the one trophy that he was brought in to win with City was, of course, the Champions League. The one trophy that every club in Europe wants to win, the biggest and arguably best cup competition in European, possibly even world football. The one trophy with an elite and prestigious history. The one trophy that would be the icing on the cake as far as Manchester City are concerned and put the club's name in history of elite clubs to win the greatest cup competition in world football, like I say. And he has failed. Simply put, the man has failed to get City beyond the quarterfinal stages in every single season that he's been in charge of, losing to the likes of Monaco, Liverpool, Tottenham, and most recently, last season, against Lyon. It's completely bizarre that with all the money spent, with all the squads and players that he's had at his disposal over the years, Guardiola simply hasn't been able to go further in this competition with City. There are of course other issues that Guardiola hasn't dealt with very well in my opinion. The loss of Vincent Kompany to retirement. The captain, the club legend, is yet to be replaced since his departure a couple of seasons ago. I'd also say that a large amount of Guardiola's transfers haven't quite hit the mark. The likes of John Stones, Claudio Bravo, Rodri and Benjamin Mendy, uh, just to name a few. Um, have been proven to be quite underwhelming. They've underperformed, in my opinion, and have been poor. And really, I think another issue on top of that is that, other than maybe with the exceptions of Raheem Sterling and Kevin De Bruyne, there's nobody in that squad that I can say has vastly improved or gotten better under the Spaniard. I genuinely don't, can't think of anybody that's vastly improved that squad or vastly improved as a player other than those two players I, I before mentioned. So maybe that's another area to look at when you're, crit or when you're critiquing uh, Guardiola's performance at City over the years. And finally, you can also look at the Mikel Arteta situation. I believe that the situation where that saw him leave the City to go on to manage Arsenal last year uh, and how much influence that had on the entire squad. I can't say for certain how much of an influence it had, but it looked on its surface like it did. And I thought it was worth mentioning here. And I'd say that overall, with looking at all of these issues and putting them all together and summing it up, maybe we can start to see why Pep doesn't hang around at clubs for more than three years. Because it means he has to put in some hard work and to try and re-energise, refresh and rebuild a single squad. He inherited a strong spine, as I previously mentioned, that over time has fallen apart with players getting older and moving on. 
And you could argue that when he left Bayern Munich and Barcelona, he left the next manager with quite a bit of work to do to get them teams back to the very top again. But now he's here, he's past the three-year mark, and he's got to now rebuild it all himself. Especially after he committed his future to the club for the, for the foreseeable future. And now we have to see Pep in a longer term job that will force him to have to work even harder than ever before to get City back to where they need to be challenging for titles. And of course, if they can manage it, challenging in Europe as well. The goal that was probably set out for him right at the beginning of his reign as manager, but he's failed to hit the, to the target so far. And let's get it straight. I like Pep Guardiola as a manager. He plays nice, attractive football. He's intriguing to listen to and to watch. And um, for what he's achieved, he's earned my respect and he probably deserves yours as well. But when you put everything into context and perspective, Maybe we are a bit too nice towards a guy blessed with having some of the best things in world football in a managerial career given to him on a silver platter. Maybe it's time we start seeing the situation for what it really is. Because I feel that if other managers were in these types of circumstances with their various clubs, then they'd be having a much harder time and a much more intense viewing from spectators, pundits, fans and various media outlets but for one reason or another Pep is given a bit more of a free pass and I think it's time we started to question Guardiola and put him a bit more under the microscope. But of course as I always say this is just one man's thoughts and one man's opinions on this particular topic. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of Pep Guardiola? What do you make of Manchester City? The problems that are underneath or going on behind the scenes there. What do you make of everything that is going on with City? Not just this season, but last season as well. What do you make of the transfer situation, the money situation, their Champions League performances, so on and so forth. I'd love to know your thoughts, comments and opinions down in the comments section below. I'm sure they will make for interesting reading. And as always, otherwise... Hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things will always be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see and speak with you all again soon in another video.